This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the 12th day of November in the year 2021. I'm Gordon Mosley, and here's what we're tracking tonight. The People's National Congress reform opened its nomination day for the party's upcoming elections early this morning at its Congress place headquarters. Nominations rolled in from various party groups locally and abroad for the positions of party leader, chairman, vice chairs, and executive positions. In the race for party leader, nominations were submitted for former chairman Basil Williams, former general secretary Aubrey Norton, and the executive members Joe Harmon and Dr. Richard Van West Charles. Mr. Harmon, who currently serves as the opposition leader, indicated that he will be taking his campaign for the party leader position across the country to the various party groups. I believe that as I go across this country, I feel that level of optimism, I feel that um, that energy which is coming out and I feel extremely confident that the team which I have put together under my leadership, that we are going to triumph in these elections and after that we have to basically work at bringing our party together, uniting our party so that we can actually basically fight the, the, the PPP, this installed PPP regime. Harmon believes that the PNC under his leadership will take a more commanding role in the efforts to unseat the incumbent government at the next elections. We believe that a strong unified People's National Congress is critical to a strong AP and new AFC coalition and that is critical to getting us back into office. I believe that is our ultimate objective, getting back into office. Meanwhile, former General Secretary of the party, Aubrey Norton, who is being backed for the position by most party groups, said he's already focused on the bigger picture and national development and the national movement. One of the advantages I think I have is that the People's Progressive Party knows full well that there is no illegality that they can go after me for and therefore I can tell them as I think once it is true and I think because you are fighting a criminal cabal in the PPP people who I think even they themselves accept that they are corrupt I think that will put me in a better position when it comes to the national uh, battle on the issue of uniting the PNC and the coalition, Mr. Norton said there is a need for more involvement of the grassroots and he knows how to get that done. I think I know more party comrades at a personal level because I've traveled the country and worked with them. I think also the fact that while I was a senior government official, party comrades could have accessed me because I was all over and all around. And if you know the People's National Congress reform, their supporters like to be in contact with the leadership. And that is why I said I will return the party to being a grassroots party in which the people in the party are in contact with the leadership and the leadership in contact with the people. Another candidate for party leader, Dr. Richard Van West Charles, believes his experience and political work over the years will do well in rebuilding the People's National Congress reform. What put me, puts me ahead is where I come to the table with my experience, my experience in terms of organizational development and management, um, and I don't think that their track records can compare with mine. So I, I am very clear, and as the campaign moves on, more will be unfolded. Dr. Van West Charles added that his track record shows that he has always been connected to the party and its members. I have a record as Minister of Health, uh, Housing, in terms of what I've just completed at GWI. I mean, I reached out to communities that existed that did not have basic access to water. So being with the grassroots doesn't mean being with them and only having a drink. You've got to be ready to be defending the quality of life to ensure that their quality of life can rise as the other sectors of society can rise. You've got to ensure that there are programs that will address their challenges for development because the party has to focus on development. 
By next week, all of the nominees for the various positions will be made public, and the campaign for delegate votes will continue in the lead-up to the party's Congress and elections, which are set to take place in the month of December. More news coming up in just a moment. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever. And it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. The light on your face, no mask will hide. Feel the joy burns deep inside. Let's have a great Christmas this year. You, me, and Republic Bank money. Whatever you need, light up your Christmas with Republic Bank and get a chance to win 825000 in cash prizes. Plus, get a chance to give a family a Christmas hamper in your name. Log on to RepublicGuyana.com for more details. Let's light up Christmas. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Salt Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Salt Guyana Inc. Alana! Oh my gosh, it's so great to see you. You must have heard. That's why you're here at GPL. The great news, GPL's 22 for 22. I absolutely did hear. They're giving away supermarket vouchers worth $25,000 to 22 customers. Isn't it just awesome how GPL is giving back to the community though? For sure. But you know what you need to do? You need to ensure your account is completely settled while prepaid customers need to purchase credit during the promo period and make Make sure that you ask for that coupon. Nobody's left out. GPL's 22 for 22. Promotions run October 1 through October 15th. Let GBTI make your dreams of owning a home a reality. Buy or build your home with us. Let us help you to completely outfit your home and make it move in ready. Need to purchase land? We finance that too. Benefit from our 10% down payment and interest rates as low as 4.25%. Calculated on the reducing balance with up to 30 years to repay. Switch your mortgage to us and learn about benefiting from the equity in your home. Invest wisely, apply online, or call your branch to schedule an appointment gbti we see guyana through your eyes my name is malkia i have taken the vaccine and today i am fully vaccinated when the vaccine arrives for the adolescent i will ensure that my daughter takes the vaccine we all know that covid is real and i want her to be safe and protected parents i encourage you to have your child vaccinated Well, the government intends to hold an amnesty for persons with illegal weapons, giving them a chance to lodge those weapons with law enforcement. The move is being considered as the Air Finale Administration prepares to legislate stiffer penalties for illegal firearm possession. The president made a statement on the issue this afternoon while examining measures that his government plans to put in place to tackle the growing crime problem. So what <clears throat> I've asked the AG to look at the laws and to apply the highest penalty, to propose an amendment to apply the highest penalty of persons found with illegal weapons. Because that is a major contributory factor to this. 
For those persons with illegal weapons, the president noted that there will be a period of amnesty to get those weapons off the streets. We're going to give a period for all those persons with illegal weapons to deposit those weapons. After which the law will be amended to give you the greatest penalty. Declaring that the life of crime is short-lived, the president announced that his government will be extending an olive branch to persons who are engaged in criminal activities with a view to give them a second chance and to make their lives better. Very soon we'll launch a program, very confidential program, to bring you in once you want to change your life. We want a discussion with you. We want to talk to you to give you an alternative pathway to earning an income and living a decent life. Under the laws of Guyana, a person found guilty of possession of an unlicensed firearm could face a fine of up to $15,000 with a jail term not exceeding three years. President Irfan Ali announced today that his administration is considering a plan to reward police divisions with good overall performance, but specifically those divisions that effectively fight crime. During an informal address to the nation today, the president said some regions and police divisions are showing positive signs where crime fighting and solving high-profile cases are concerned, while there are other police divisions that are lagging. As a result, he said he believes that those divisions performing well should be rewarded. Where there is good performance, there must be differentiated treatment. You must be recognized for good performance. Incentive-based crime fighting. And the president said to bring that evenness in crime fighting across the regions, his government will invest heavily in police officers and the police force in general. And we're going to hold them more accountable. Greater presence is needed and we're going to incentivize those who are high performers. President Ali is firm in his belief that crime is under decrease across the country based on the statistics provided by the police. He said from observations, the areas that are covered under the Safe City program, which involves CCTV, are showing better results because the authorities in those areas are in a better position to oversee what is happening across the communities. That is why to address all the regions, nationally, we are going to have a safe country program. We're going to have the entire country connected onto CCTV cameras. So that all of the country will be on the watch by the relevant authorities, so that we can be proactive in crime fighting. The president said he is satisfied with the overall workings of the police force and how it has been performing except in a few areas. Consequently, he noted his government will be investing more in intelligence gathering. While the principals of the statement construction company, which was recently awarded a $340 million contract for the construction of the Bamia Primary School in Linden, are pushing back at the criticism over the group's experience in construction and other questions surrounding the award of the government contract. Earlier this week, the Ministry of Local Government signed the school construction contract with the company after it was awarded the contract through the National Tender Board. The principals of the statement construction company are the owners and directors of the Hits and Gems Entertainment Company and the Kashif and Shanghai Football Organization. Immediately following the announcement of the contract and the revelation of the persons behind the company, questions were raised about the contract's award and the experience of the company. The company was registered seven months ago, but they registered a few months later. It is unclear whether at the time of its bidding for the contract, it was back on the national company's register. Appearing on the Hangout Radio program on 94.1 FM, which is owned by the Hits and Jams Company, director at Hits and Jams and Statement Construction, Kerwin Ballas, explained that while the company may be new to the construction field, it has brought together trained and experienced persons in construction to lead the project. It's a company... Um we, that we formed a couple months ago, um, Kashif and Shanghai and Hits and Jams. But um, I'm happy to have Mr. Series here with us because he was the first person that we actually consulted with um, when we thought of getting into construction. Right. Um, you re recall about a year ago, we signed an MOU 
um, with the government and we also signed a LOI with Marriott International yes. to build a Sheraton uh, branded hotel uh, which I believe is might be um, you know one of the biggest hotels that will be built in Ghana in the near future um, I also consulted with Mr. Sears on mm -hmm. that. As a matter of fact, his company uh, is the company that did the geotechnical work for us. So, right. you know, when I'm looking at these articles and I'm seeing people saying, you know, yes, it is a new company, but we have done a lot of backgrounds on, um, you know, pulling together a very competent team, um, starting with Mr. Sears here. And we have a very competent team in terms of executing this project. And responding to claims that the company and its directors are better known for entertainment promotions than having anything to do with construction. Construction, Mr. Boller said the company has been expanding into new and other areas and will continue to do so. I, I noticed one of the articles says that DJs oh are into construction. Yes, we both have started from the DJ background, but person said the same thing when we got into media yes. like what they knew about media you know what they know about the radio station mm -hmm. eight years now and i think we can safely say that we have the number one uh, radio station in Guyana, and it was the same thing we got the persons and the personnel uh, to ensure that you know it was run at a very high standard and a very professional outfit and today eight years later hits and jams rage is here ballers also said the company is currently involved in other construction projects and will continue to bid for other government projects Statement Construction has enlisted the services of well-known Guyanese engineer Charles Series and his company as consultants on the school construction project. Mr. Series, who also appeared on the radio program, said there could be no questioning of his competence and experience in the field of engineering and construction, and he's pleased to be working along with a new company. He said he believes that criticism of the company and its directors may be more grounded in racial and political issues, and he does not support that. Series, who has been outspoken on various issues surrounding construction, had filed a $200 million lawsuit against former opposition leader, now Vice President, Barra Jagdio, over claims that he benefited from land handout gifts under the former government. He said he believes when it comes to contracts, new companies should be allowed to bid and participate in vying for government construction contracts. Since the signing of the contract for the construction of the school and the fallout, the Ministry of Local Government has been relatively silent on the issue, directing all questions to the tender board. Regional officials in Linden have indicated that they played no part in the awarding of the contract, but will be keeping a close eye on the construction of the school, which the regional chairman Deron Adams reminded was initiated under the former government. For its part, the statement construction company has launched a hiring campaign for the project in the town of Linden, searching for general construction and other skilled workers. The company has also indicated that it wants the workforce for the project to be drawn from the Linden community. There were four other companies that submitted tenders for the project. The bid by the statement company was the second lowest bid. In the travel industry, noting that over the past six months, 44% of American Airlines flights from Guyana have been delayed, the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce today blasted the airline over its poor service to the Guyana market. In a statement, the Tourism Ministry also said that an average of two flights every month are completely cancelled by American, and the government has received numerous complaints about the manner in which customers are treated when there are cancellations. The tourism ministry said while it is appreciative of the fact that American Airlines continues to serve the Guiana route, the quality of service is untenable and not in keeping with the government's business, tourism and developmental agenda. The government, the ministry said, supports American Airlines operating in Guyana, but stresses that poor treatment of passengers is unacceptable. Passengers who have been experiencing difficulties receiving refunds for flight cancellations are being asked by the ministry to file official complaints with the Competition and Consumer Affairs Commission so that those issues will be formally addressed. American Airlines launched its service to Guyana in November 2018 with daily flights. At the start of the pandemic in 2020, the airline pulled all of its flights out of the Guyana market, but returned to the route late last year. Over the past few months, the airline has come under a wave of criticism from passengers and travel agents for its many delays and cancellations. While it operates daily flights to Guyana, American Airlines does not have a Guyana office. Family and friends of the murdered physician Dr. Colin Roach gathered at a Charlotte Street Wesleyan church this midday to bid their farewell. Tributes flowed as the widow, children, and other family members and close friends gazed at a brown casket drenched with two large floral pieces at the front of the church. 
Former Education Minister Nicolette Henry, who worked with Dr. Roach at the U.S. CDC Guiana office, says she will remember him as a friend who has left a good legacy. She said he spoke often in their conversations about where Guyana was and where it could be, and was someone who desired and always pushed for excellence. A representative of the Mercy Hospital School of Nursing told the mourners that a late doctor was a good man and a great teacher, pointing out that the country has lost one of its brightest minds in the medical field. A former primary and high school classmate who later became his executive secretary says she will remember Dr. Colin Roach as the man who never forgot his roots and always stayed connected to those he knew. She said when she was finding it difficult to get a job, he was the one who hired her. The officiating pastor told the congregation that everyone has an appointment with death, so it is important to live one's life right. The pastor raised concern about the murder rate in the country and said it should be addressed. The service ended as the mourners loudly sang blessed assurance. The body of Dr. Colin Roach will be flown on Saturday to his hometown in Essequibo for a final service and burial. Essequibians are remembering him as one of their brightest sons. Two teens were recently charged and remanded to jail for the murder of the doctor at his Duke Street Kingston office. The two youths will make their next court appearance later this month. Farpan and Mendes is committed to promoting development through quality, service and integrity. Customers are guaranteed genuine products, reliability and excellence in service. Their corporate head office at Providence affords you the added convenience of a spacious showroom with secured parking. Farfan and Mendes continues to offer their valued customers a wide range of genuine and affordable German-engineered equipment. They're leading the way in clean, green alternative energy solutions with industry-leading brands of solar equipment. So visit their showroom at Providence and enjoy efficient and courteous service. Barford and Mendes, offering you solutions you can depend on. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come get color. your Buster, Buster 100 dollar, dollar. Come get your Buster, Buster 100 dollar, dollar. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever. And it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline.
Across the region tonight, U.S. President Joe Biden has signed into law a bill calling for more sanctions and other punitive measures against the government of Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega, who extended his grip on power in an election that Washington denounced as a sham. Biden, who has accused Ortega of orchestrating Sunday's vote as a pantomime election that was neither free nor fair, gave his approval to the bill a week after its final passage by the U.S. Congress with overwhelming bipartisan support. The Biden administration plans to announce new Nicaragua sanctions very soon, a senior State Department official told Reuters on Tuesday, saying it would be just the first in a series of U.S. steps that will ramp up over time. Ortega, a former Marxist guerrilla leader, clinched his fourth consecutive term after jailing political rivals and cracking down on critical media in an election that drew international condemnation before and after it was held. Chairman of CARICOM Antigua's Prime Minister Gaston Brown says he has instructed the Guyana-based CARICOM Secretariat to seek vaccines and pills from the U.S. government as the region continues to deal with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the region, the virus has killed 9,164 persons and infected more than 386,000. A statement issued following the weekly cabinet meeting in Antigua said that Mr. Brown had reported to his ministers that he has instructed the CARICOM Secretariat to seek vaccines and COVID pills from the U.S. government. Last week, the Pfizer company said its COVID-19 pill reduced the risk of hospitalization or death by 89%. Back in October, interim data from a Phase 3 study showed that another pill, an investigational oral antiretroviral drug that was discovered by researchers at Emory University, appeared also to significantly reduce the risk of hospitalization or death in patients with mild to moderate COVID-19. And finally tonight, international news. Turkish authorities have stopped all citizens of Iraq, Syria and Yemen from flying to Turkey to Belarus until further notice. Turkey's civil aviation authority said it was because of illegal migrant crossings from Belarus into the European Union. The UN Security Council has accused Belarus of using the migrants to destabilize the EU's eastern border. The EU is lobbying countries in the Middle East to take similar measures. Belarus's authoritarian leader Alexander Lukashenko has threatened to cut off gas supplies to Europe if new sanctions are imposed. Meanwhile, Belarusian and Russian paratroopers have staged joint drills near the Polish and Lithuanian borders. Russia is Belarus's main ally and has rejected the accusations made by the European Union. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight and this week. I'm Gordon Mosley, thanking you for joining us and encouraging you to stay safe.